What is up, everybody? How you doing? How you doing? Good morning. Good morning. So, we gonna do a reading for all signs this morning. And for those of you who saw that, I took a poll. A poll that I haven't taken in two or three years to see what type of situation most of you are looking at the most when you come to the tarot videos, you know? The last time I took that poll, I believe, was in 2021. And the majority of the people were looking at the current person, which I thought was strange. But this time, the majority of the people are wanting to see what's coming in next. So, I guess that's probably a poll that I should probably remember to take like once every six months because it probably changes, you know, due to the astrology and just timelines moving forward and whatnot. So, that's what we're going to look at. What's coming in next? New love for 2024. So... You know what to do if you want to find out how to schedule a personal reading. Please check down there in the description box of this video. That's where you'll find everything you need to know. And yes, here very, very soon, um, possibly even today, I'm going to be getting started on my next course, The Intermediate Guide to Manifestation. Now that course is going to get a little bit uh, in-depth and complex. And if you're not really familiar with, you know, the manifestation path and, and, and whatnot, it might get a little bit confusing, honestly, because we're going to be breaking down and explaining science, the actual quantum physics behind how all this shit works. And it's going to be some shit that you ain't going to find nowhere else on the internet, I promise you that. I had to attend a special mind mastery school to learn a lot of it, a whole lot of it. And I promise you, it's not anywhere else on the internet. I've looked. I've looked. It's nowhere else on the internet. But anyway, all right. Anything else? Personal readings, description of the video. Oh, yeah. Don't, don't, don't forget to check out my, my last course, though, the uh, Beginner's Guide to Manifestation. Had a very positive response with that. And, yes, the Intermediate Guide will be coming here very, very soon. Okay, let's jump into this. Actually, I want to get one more incense stick in the air before we get started. And then we're going to get started with Aries. We're going to be seeing what's coming in next. New love for 2024 for Aries. Got to get these good vibes in the air. Can't really open the window, though. It's storming here in Southern California. It's storming. The power actually flickered on and off earlier, a couple hours ago. All right. All right, Aries, let's see what's up with you. Let's see what's coming in next for Aries. First thing I want to look at is whether or not this is somebody you know. Is the next person coming in for Aries somebody that they know or a totally new, different person? Let's see. Hmm. Oh, the Two of Cups. Page of Swords. It could very possibly be somebody that you do know. Very possibly. Yep, I think so. I think so. And for some of you, hang on. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, for some of you, it may be somebody that maybe not, I'm not going to say you had a past history in dating with, but for some of you, there may have been something that happened in the past between the two of you that wasn't all that great with the five of wands and the six of cups here for some of you but i'm thinking that for a lot of you it is somebody that you know but i don't think it's somebody that you would suspect like you may not have actually thought of this person that way before it's going to be kind of abrupt and unexpected this connection is going to start getting really, really strong, very suddenly, abruptly, and unexpectedly. And I'm going to use my generic example, okay? This is just, I think this is the best example. Now, let's say, let's say, for example, it's somebody at the workplace. Now, I don't have any workplace cards here on the table. Again, this is just a generic example to explain what I'm talking about. 
somebody that you know of at the workplace, but you don't really think about them that much. You're aware of their existence. Maybe every now and then you say what's up to them on lunch break. That's about it. Um, you may have had a couple of conversations with them before, but they, they don't really take up any space in your head at all. And then one day you're out at the fair with your family and you're standing in the line to get a goddamn funnel cake, you know, and then there they are behind you in line and you turn around like, Hey, what's up? What are you doing here? Bam. Now you all come together and there's this connection that you never would have expected. Like, whoa, holy shit. I see a side of this person that I never even knew existed. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I think for a lot of you, it is somebody that you do currently know. It could be a Scorpio for some of you. could be a fellow Aries. I also have Aquarius, Taurus, and Gemini here. All right, well, let's see how the situation plays out. Let's see how the situation plays out between Aries and the next person coming in. What deck do I want to use? Gilded Tarot. How's the situation playing out for the first 30 days? Will it take a turn for the best or take a turn for the worst? Hmm, three of Pentacles. Hmm, ah, Empress reversed. And the Eight of Pentacles. Some of you, maybe one of you might have a really, really conflicting work schedule possibly. You know, like maybe one of you works all the time and you're not really able to see each other all that much. But I'm not seeing you abandon this, but for the first month, you're not 100% sure how stable this is going to be. You're a little bit weary because we have, now we have workplace cards here. But it's looking like maybe both of you have conflicting work schedules, possibly. There's some kind of, not really a blockage, but kind of getting in the way a little bit. But I'm not seeing separation happening. Not seeing separation happening. What's the advice? Mm, the two of swords. Okay. So don't make any solid split second decisions without thinking this through. Okay. Um, eventually what we have to end up deciding is whatever blockages are in the way, are we willing to work through these blockages together as a team? Like what blockage is in the way? Is it distance? Maybe, maybe for some of you, it could be long distance. Okay. Well, somebody, if we want to make this work, somebody's going to have to be willing to leave their old life behind. Period. 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 Either I'm going to have to leave my old life behind you're going to have to leave your old life behind, or possibly both of us. We can make it work that way. We could both just leave our old life behind and just come together and go somewhere and build something totally new and start from scratch. You know? So, which is it going to be? So, whatever obstacles are in our way, there is no obstacle that can stand in the way of two people who really want each other. Aside from probably prison, that would be about the only thing that can really stand in your way. Aside from prison, unless somebody's in prison, as long as two people really want this bad enough, you'll find a way. So that's what I would be thinking about for the first month to two months. we got to start having this conversation. Our work schedules are too conflicting. Well, which one of us is willing to maybe go look for a different job? If neither of us are willing to make a change for this connection... Well, then is this a connection that I need? Now, I'm not alluding to one answer or another. I'm just saying with that two of swords, these are some of the things that you should be thinking about. Okay. All right, Taurus, who's the next person coming in for Taurus in 2024? Who's the next person coming in for Taurus? Is this somebody that Taurus knows or is it a totally new, different person? Hmm, high Priestess. I think for a lot of you, it might be somebody that you you have this intuitive feeling that they're interested in you, but you can't prove it. Hmm. 
And if you have that intuitive feeling that they are interested in you, I do think that you are right. I do think the two of you do have a soul contract. Uh, but they may not be 100% aware of the opportunity that's available to them. Hang on a second, y'all. They may not be aware of the opportunity that's actually available to them. I'm kind of thinking it's somebody that you know. It's somebody, could be somebody at the workplace for some of you, possibly. So, and you kind of have this funny intuitive feeling that, that this person is interested in you. You feel this funny connection. But sometimes maybe it even kind of gets you thinking whether or not you're just making this up in your head. Lover's card. No, you are not making this up in your head. Lover's card, Empress. The two of you do have a soul contract. But with this Two of Wands energy and the Temperance energy and the Four of Cups, you all are both kind of just like sitting ducks, not really taking any action towards this. So hopefully... The door to this opportunity doesn't close before you all get the chance to start working on this soul contract. Because with the lover's card and the empress, y'all could build a life partnership. Like for real. Mm. See, King of Cups, a lot of you know who I'm talking about. If you know exactly who I'm talking about... King of Cups, yes, this person has a lot of feelings for you, but the Ace of Cups is reversed. So it's very likely that this, this situation could be completely passed up. Hang on a second. I'm going to grab my water bottle, y'all. Hold up. Uh, I should have refilled it. Well, let's see how this is playing out. Is this person taking action? in April. Well, how about the next three months? How's this playing out? Is anybody taking action in the next three months? Anybody taking action in the next three months? Ah, Queen of Wands reversed. You're kind of starting to lose interest in the situation a little bit. Six of Swords. See, this right here is how karmic contracts start. You know, you all hear me talk about having karmic contracts with somebody, meaning unresolved, unfinished business from a previous lifetime. Well, this is the lifetime where it started. You all got a soul contract, but nobody's been taking action. So you might end up losing interest and in completely moving on from this before this even gets the chance to take lift off. Empress, there's a contract here. What's the advice for this? What is the advice for this? Queen of coins reversed. Mm, eight of wands. Well, I don't want to... Here's the thing. I don't want to put it all on you. But I don't want to put it all on them either. I don't want to go to either extreme end of the spectrum. I don't want to say, okay, it's all up to you. you. You have to be the one that spills your heart out, right? But I also don't want to say sit around and wait on them because the door is going to close on this opportunity. So I'll say it like this. Let's start getting the ball rolling in that direction, okay? I'm going to use another generic go-to example. Okay. And for some reason with my examples, I always use the workplace. I know it's not a workplace connection for every one of you, but I'm just going to use that and take this and, and apply the energy how, how it fits. Okay. Say it's somebody at the workplace and you know, they dig in you, you feel it. You see them looking at you every now and then you can just feel it. You can tell maybe they do little behaviors every now and then to where you can kind of tell you just feel that connection. So here's what you do. You start seeing if you can start up regular conversations with them on a daily basis, right? And you make first make that connection at work. 
so that now we're talking on a regular basis at work and we've developed a friendship at work. And then what you do is you take it to social media. Maybe follow them on Instagram, send them a friend request on Facebook, something like that, you know? Then we take it to the Facebook inbox or the Instagram DM, and we're talking regularly outside of work now, you know? And you just keep pushing and pushing and pushing until it gains enough momentum. And okay, now, hey, can I just get your number? You know, now we got each other's phone numbers. It's getting momentum, getting momentum, getting momentum, and, and see if you can get the ball rolling that way because... This sitting and waiting shit right here, if this sitting and waiting shit keeps going on for the next three months, uh, yeah, this could end up being a complete and total miss opportunity that turns into karma. Very well could be. So we got to start taking some kind of action. Again, I'm not going to put it all on you, but when you feel it and it's driving you nuts, and you know that there's a connection there, sometimes we gotta take action or else we're gonna end up creating karma. So, all right, Gemini. Gemini. Who's the next person coming in for Gemini? Is it somebody that you know? Cards are already falling on the floor. We got the Four of Cups again. That's a very popular card today, man. Four of Cups. Uh, hang on. Two of Pentacles. Four of Swords reversed. Yeah, I'm going to say that I do kind of think it is somebody that you know. I do think that it is somebody that you know. But again, I'm going to say the same thing I said to Aries. It's somebody that you probably never would suspect. Or maybe you may have thought about it a little bit. But you never would suspect it. Um, I think both of you. I don't know. It kind of feels to me like this person is a little bit more interested in you than they let on. Could be a Pisces for some of you. They've been waiting on a good opportunity to come forward. And they already have planned out exactly what they want to say to you and how. As soon as the opportunity presents itself and makes itself available. And shit. Fucking Ten of Cups, man. I'm going to tell you what. There could be a third party in the mix for some of you. So there could be somebody else in the way. Like maybe they're already in a relationship or you could already be talking to somebody there. I feel like there's kind of, there's somebody in the middle here or maybe they think there's somebody else. I don't know. There's some kind of third energy here. Some kind of third energy in the way. And that may be why this person doesn't see it as a good opportunity to come forward. Does that make sense? Yeah, they don't want the drama. They don't want the drama. Maybe there wouldn't be any drama. I don't know. Let's see how the situation's playing out in the next three months. So that would be April, May, June. From now to June. How's it playing out for the next three months? Is this person taking action? Ooh, ooh. I see communication here, but what in the world is this? Why does this keep coming up? Six of Swords, Eight of Cups. I see you all in communication. I do think this person is going to take action, but they're not 100% forthcoming. Not really. They may kind of come across a little bit insecure or a little bit indecisive. And that may be off-putting to you immediately. So this is telling me that you're walking away from this. What is that all about? Huh. This is telling me you're walking away from this person and jumping in with somebody totally different. That you may not even have a contract with. Hmm. 
I never would have expected to see that come through the next person coming in. But it's come through twice now. What's the advice on this? What is the advice on this? The Sun card. And the Emperor, again. And the Four of Coins. Okay, well, I'm gonna tell you something kind of similar to what I told Taurus, but not exactly. Uh, but we gotta get this person to open up. We gotta get them to open up. Okay, so with the Ace of Swords, I hate to be cliche, but communication is so fucking important. Um, you have to give this person some kind of green light. They got to have some kind of green light. Because honestly, I think this person is a little bit insecure. You know, maybe a little bit afraid of rejection, afraid of abandonment or rejection. So if they have the green light, you know, as long as you say, man, I've, I've done made it so fucking clear to this person that, you know, the, the green light, if you've done all that, only if you've done all that and they still ain't taking action, then just come forward and, and take action. Because again, similar to what I told Taurus, this could end up creating karma. And you could end, and, I, and actually I have seen this come through personal readings before, but it's never, it never comes through in the future. I've seen this come through for past situations, but I've never seen this coming up in the future. That's weird that this is coming through like this. Um, but this is those types of situations where you have a contract with somebody, but you walk past it and jump in with somebody that you didn't have a pre-birth contract with. Does this make sense? And then, and then it turns into a whole big mess of a shit show. And that's what this could end up turning into. Only, only when you can tell yourself honestly that you have exhausted every option you have. I've given them the green light. I've told them that I'm into them. Like there is no reason in the world why why they they should be up in their head wondering how I feel. Only then do you walk away from a connection. Once you've extended every option and you've done everything that you possibly can, then then you have no choice but to walk away. You know, but only then, only then. I wouldn't I wouldn't just let a connection sit and linger up in my head wondering. You know, that's what creates karma. And you can cut a karmic contract either way, but still, we got to try everything first if we have a contract with somebody. All right, Cancer. Cancer. Is the next person coming in for Cancer somebody that they know? Is this somebody that you know? Knight of Swords. No, I don't think so. I do not think so. I think the next person coming in is probably going to be something very unexpected. It could be just communication at first. Like you could meet them online, you know. But you want to be careful here. Because I am seeing some codependency energy with this. You want to be careful. The reason you want to be careful with that energy is because when we connect with somebody out of loneliness, it's really easy to let red flags get swept under the rug. Really easy. So you just want to watch out for that. Um, but I don't think this is somebody that you currently know. It's probably going to be somebody, like I said, that it's going to start off as communication. And for some of you, you may just like meet them like online or something like it could start off. You, you ever met somebody like through a comment thread <laughs> or going back and forth in the comment thread, then your inbox dings and you, you, ever, you ever met somebody like that? I'm not saying that's how it's going to be for everybody, but for a couple of you, it could be something, something like that. It's going to be communication first and then the connection gets stronger and stronger and stronger. And then the next thing you know, bam, we a couple. So I don't think that it's somebody that you currently know. It could be an air sign for some of you. 
I have Pisces, Aries, and Taurus here. <clears throat> Let's see how it's playing out in the next three months. How's this playing out in the next three months? Ooh, you might actually end up feeling happy for the very first time. But like I said, with that codependency energy, you want to be really, 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 really careful with that. Because you don't want to make the mistake of thinking that somebody is making you happy. That's really dangerous. Really dangerous. A person can't make you happy. A person can give you pleasure and make you feel really good, but that's not happiness. So be real careful with that. Real careful. But you may start noticing that connecting with this person uh, feels really, 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 really good. Communication's a little bit funny, though. You're going to kind of start noticing that you all may speak a little bit of a different vibrational language. You all are going to have to get to know each other. Probably after the first month to two months, you're going to start kind of noticing some miscommunications that you all speak a little, especially if you're dealing with a fucking air sign, man, especially. Um, so you're going to start realizing that it feels like you've known this person your whole life. And it's because you have. It's because you have. I think you and this person do have karma from a past life. Now, that does not mean that it has to be a bad thing. Matter of fact, I think that a life partnership and something long-term is in the contract. I do think that is... Y'all probably, probably fought, fucked up a long-term relationship in your last lifetime. And you want to come back together and see if you can build a life partnership in this lifetime. Emperor and Empress. There you go, man. Uh-oh, again, miscommunication. Do we have any advice here? What advice do we have? Man, look. Again, be very, 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 very careful when it comes to this. You have to make sure that you are the one responsible for your happiness. Okay? Yes, meeting a new person can make you feel really good. Yes, connecting with a new person can, can create an explosion of pleasure chemicals and, and hormones and whatnot that, that make you feel really fucking good. But we don't want to get addicted to that because that is not happiness. That will wear off. It will. It will. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your sign is. Even when the universe brings you the one divine partner it picked out for you for life, that feeling will wear off over time. And then that's when, when that feeling wears off, that's when you'll find out whether or not true love was ever there to begin with. <clears throat> Once that feeling starts wearing off. So just make sure you don't give this person the key to your happiness. You're responsible for your own happiness. And make sure the two of you learn each other's vibrational language. Learn each other's love language. Because miscommunications early on like that can cause some pretty big bumps in the road, you know? Nothing wrong with bumps in the road as long as we're both willing to work through it together as a team. All right, Leo. Who's the next person coming in for Leo? Is it somebody that you know or somebody you've never met? In 2024. And again, the, the main timeline that I'm giving this is the next three months, mainly. Who's the next person coming in for Leo? Somebody that you currently know or somebody you never met. Let's see. <clears throat> Five of Cups reversed. Ace of Pentacles reversed. Now, for some of you, it could be somebody at a distance. I don't think it's somebody that you currently know. Best case scenario, it could be, and it's probably only one or two of you, but it could be somebody that you've communicated with in the past, you know, but for the majority of you, I don't think that you have ever had any kind of contact with this person. I don't think you have a clue who they are at all. 
Uh, could be a water sign for some of you. The signs I have on the table here are Aries. Aries is the only sign that I have. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So really, really, really heavy emotions, but it's a little bit frustrating because this person seems a little bit indecisive. They may kind of send you some mixed signals with the two of swords here. Ace of cups upright, nine of cups reversed. Could be kind of hot and cold and on and off, you know, they, you know, kind of hot and cold and back and forth. Um, I feel like you're ready to just jump right straight ahead first into this. You're ready for that. And it seems like on some days this person's ready for that too. But then on other days, it seems like they kind of pull back a little bit. They could be going through some financial issues. That could be what their problem is. I'm not 100% clear on their intentions just yet. I'm not really getting any bad vibes from them right now. Okay, well, let's see. Could be an Aquarius for some of you. Let's see how it plays out from now to June. Let's see how it plays out. I'm going to take a turn for the best or for the worst. Page of Cups reversed. Hmm. I don't know, this person's behavior is kind of bothering you a little bit. So you're kind of like taking a step back. I don't think you're like leaving this person necessarily, but you are kind of pulling your energy back. <clears throat> yeah, see, it's starting to bother you and it's starting to weigh on you. Ten of Wands, Nine of Swords. So, hmm, let's get the advice. What's the advice for this? Four of Cups, Hermit reversed, Page of Swords reversed. Well, it's very important that you call these things out in the beginning, okay? One thing, I don't, I don't know if everybody understands this, but you know that every connection and every relationship is gonna have red flags, right? You know that, right? You are never, ever, ever going to meet a person where there is not one single red flag. It's just that the problem is we only talk about the red flags after the relationship ends. That's the only time we talk about it. Now, when I say red flags, I'm not talking about big fucking scary shit that you need to run from. I'm not talking about you find out somebody's living a fucking double life as a crack addicted stripper hooker on the weekends. I'm not talking about that, you know. Talking about the little shit, you know, say one thing one day, another thing another day, and, you know, actions not really matching up with your words all that much, a little bit inconsistent, you know, a little shit like the, the little shit, the little shit, you know, call it out, call it out, say something, don't be rude about it, just say, hey, I could have swore the other day you said this. And now you're saying this. Was that my fault? And hey, maybe sometimes it was you. Maybe you misheard them. You never know, but you got to say something about it. Whenever we meet somebody new, a lot of times what we want to do is kind of sweep it under the rug because we don't want to push them away. You know, but you just approach it like an adult and be polite about it. You know, I could have swore the other day you said this and now you're saying this. And, and if they try to play it off like you misunderstood it, oh, okay, okay, take a mental note of that. Then if it happens again, look, it's the same fucking thing that happened last time. The other day you said this, and now you're saying this. You know, shine a light on it so that they know you're paying attention. As long as we work through the red flags in the beginning, right, and work through that shit, man, y'all could have some, y'all could fucking be a power couple, dude. Ten of Pentacles, Ten of Cups. This could turn into the most amazing fucking thing that ever happened to you in your life, right? As long as we're both on the same page at the same time, working towards the same goal. If not, I can see you walking away from this before the end of summertime. All right. 
Virgo. Virgo, who's the next person coming in in 2024 for Virgo? Is it somebody you currently know or somebody you have never met before? Next person coming in for Virgo. Somebody you currently know or somebody you've never met before? Hmm. Eight of Swords reversed. That could be somebody that you know. It almost kind of feels like, hang on. Yeah, it almost kind of feels like you're starting to realize this person has been interested in you for a while. Or maybe for some of you, <coughs> maybe for some of you, you've known this person was interested in you and you were trying to ignore it. But I'm kind of feeling like for a lot of you, it is somebody you know. And for a lot of you, it could be somebody at the workplace. But why does the Eight of Cups keep coming up here? Actually, wait a minute. Let me clarify that real quick. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. This person, I think, by the time the two of you connect, they are fresh out of a relationship. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe for some of you, you're inter you're, there's somebody that is in a relationship that you have a feeling is interested in you. And they're waiting to walk away from the person that they're with to get with you. Boy, you got to be careful with that, man. I don't have time to go down that rabbit hole for this video, but boy, you got to be careful with that for all kinds of reasons, energetic reasons, but I don't have time for that right now. But I do think that it is somebody that you know. And when the two of you connect, I think they're going to be fresh out of a relationship. And when I say fresh, I mean within like, within the last couple of months type shit. So, okay. Could be a Leo for some of you. Also have, could be a fellow Virgo. I also have Aquarius here. Mm, Aries. Mm. See, fresh out of a relationship, man. That's fresh out. They're heartbroken and they're looking for a new relationship as quick as possible. That's dangerous. Okay. All right. Well, let's see how it plays out for the first three months. How's it playing out for the first three months? Hmm. Empress. Spoiler alert. It might end up being long term. Very well made. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Good deal. Good dealio, Emilio. So you're probably going to realize within the first three months that this will be long term. Um, but there's still past vibrational baggage, and that's okay. That's not a guaranteed deal breaker as long as you work through it or whoever it is that's carrying the past vibrational baggage for the majority of you, I think is this person. And as long as they work through it, and maybe sometimes I know that, that sometimes our ego can get the best of us, but sometimes you got to help them work through it. You know, sometimes you got to help them do that. You got to put your ego aside, put your emotions aside and understand that we all have a past. Not everybody has healed from their past. And if you really love somebody and you really want to be with them, you got to understand that sometimes you got to help guide them through the healing if you really want to be with them. What's the advice? Yeah, there's the Six of Swords, Eight of Cups again, man. Yeah, you're going to have to be patient with this person. You're going to have to be patient with them because they are fighting one hell of a battle that you probably, I'm not going to say you don't know anything about it, but you may not really understand the full depth of it. So be patient with them. And if you can try to help guide them through it, you know, try to help guide them through it. Healing is a process. It's a lengthy energy transmutation process. Okay. 
And as long as they're going through it, and as long as they're working through it, it's all good. Y'all can build something amazing. All right, Libra. Libra. Who's the next person coming in for Libra? Is it somebody you currently know? Or somebody you've never met before? Mm, the death person, or the death person. <laughs> the death card, I think it is a person that some of you know. I think so. For some of you, it could be somebody that you have past history with coming back. It very well could be. Could be a Scorpio for some of you. I do think whether you have a past history with them in love or not, I do think you've had some kind of past history with them, whether it was friendship or love. The signs I have are Libra, Aquarius, and Scorpio here. Um, yeah, okay. Somebody you know, I think, for the majority of you. You're going to be moving really slow, too. I don't know why. It's not even telling me why it's moving so slow. This is weird. But it'll probably start off with this person trying to be very sexual. And I don't know if you're trying to put the brakes on that so that it doesn't turn into a sex-based connection or what. But you're kind of suspicious of this person. You're up in your head overthinking it, not sure if they really want a true genuine connection or just a sex-based connection. Or, or again, a connection where they're just using you for something, okay? So if you're a woman who deals with men, you could be concerned that they just want like a sex-based connection. If you're a man that deals with women, you could be concerned that they're just after your money. This devil card here is being used for something other than love. But it came out in the reverse next to the Ace of Wands reverse. So I'm not saying that that's the deal just yet. But you are concerned about that. So you're putting the brakes on the situation, trying to take things slow until you find out what this person's intentions are. So how's it playing out in the first three months? How's it playing out? Seven of Pentacles. Hey, you're actually putting in quite a bit of work on this situation. So, Ten of Cups. I do think this is taking a turn for the best. But you're still kind of up in your head wondering... I don't understand. This doesn't make sense. This has got to be some Libra shit happening here, dude. <laughs> this has got to be some of that flippy floppy Libra shit, dude. Because we got Ten of Cups here. But we got Seven of Pentacles. So it looks like it's taking a turn for the very, very best and turning out very successful. But some days you're still thinking that you put in a lot of work on this and didn't quite get in return what you wanted even though it looks very successful. What's the advice here? What is the advice? The moon card. Oh, oh. Well, so allow yourself to go through a period of gestation and changes. Pay very close attention to your perception of yourself. Too. Don't push too hard. Don't ever try too hard to make something happen a certain way. If you are trying everything that you can to make something happen a certain way and it's not working the way that you're trying to make it work, then back off and relax. This is one of those types of situations that... that It'll probably, you'll probably have to wait until later on down the line looking back before you realize how good this situation is. 
but nothing is ever 100% perfect rainbows and unicorns. Nothing is. So don't be expecting perfection from yourself or from anyone else. All we're looking for is effort. That's all we're looking for. Are you putting forth effort? Can you tell yourself that honestly? Cool, you're good. Are they putting forth effort? Even if it's not the effort that you necessarily want, are they putting forth some effort? Are they putting forth effort? As long as they're putting forth effort, that means that they care and they're trying. Let this, because the two of you are going to, over the next year, as long as you stick with this and keep working through it, the two of you are going to turn into very different versions of yourself. This is going to bring out the best in you and the best in them. You know that can be an ugly process sometimes, right? You know in order to bring out the best in you, you have to be challenged. You know that, right? Bringing out the best in you isn't always rainbows and unicorns and happiness and sunshine. It can be fucking tough shit that brings out the best in you. Allow that process to unfold. Y'all could build something amazing. All right, Scorpio. Scorpio is the next person coming in for Scorpio. Somebody you know or somebody you've never met before. Let's see. Temperance. I do think it is somebody that you have your eye on. I think it is somebody you have your eye on. I think so. <clears throat> Could be a Sagittarius for some of you. You've kind of been patiently waiting for them to come forward with a love offer, though. And again, with the fucking Eight of Cups, man. It is somebody that you have your eye on. And it almost kind of feels like you are so set in your ways that if they don't come forward with a love offer, you're going to walk away from this situation altogether. I don't think that's what's happening. I think the two of you will end up being brought together because I think this is a pretty serious soul contract that, I, I mean, you're not forced to do anything. You know, you have free will to do whatever the hell you want. Um, but this is going to be a soul contract that is not going to be that easy for you to walk away from, right? So, like, say, for example, say, for example, it's somebody at the workplace. I always use workplace examples. And you, it just drives you so crazy working with this person that you just want to go find a different job, Right? Man, I just can't even take working with this person. The connection is so intense. It's affecting my work performance. I'm going to go find another job. You can apply for every place in town. You won't get a call. You won't get a call. Even if it says now hiring and you are more than qualified, you won't get a call. It's not going to be that easy to walk away from. Now, could you just quit your job and say, Mom, let me live with you for a little bit, you know, until I find a new job? Yes, you could. You know, that, that, you know that'd be a very hard decision to make. You could make it happen if you wanted, but this isn't a situation you're going to be able to walk away from very easily. So, Ten of Cups. Could be a Virgo for some of you. You got that uh, hermit card there. I got Virgo, Sagittarius, Scorpio here on the table. Well, let's see how the two of you are coming together. What is happening that brings the two of you together and how's this situation playing out? What's happening that brings you all together? How is this playing out? <laughs> Knight of Cups. There we go. Okay, Queen of Pentacles. Well, I think the person does want to come forward. They're just not 100% sure how you feel. I think you intimidate this person a little bit. 
Yeah, you intimidate them just a little bit. So they kind of got their guard up a little bit. Um, but basically, the universe is going to keep trying to put you in situations that bring the two of you together. And it could, hopefully it doesn't, but it could end up being a dramatic situation that brings you all together. It very well possibly could. If somebody doesn't make a move here soon, then it could be something, some kind of drama, some kind of ugly situation that brings the two of you together, if that makes any sense. Wish I could think of an example off the top of my head. But like, say for example, a, a, a and again, I'm going to use a workplace example, okay? They're just, they're easy examples to use. Say for example, another coworker gets into a, car accident or something like that, right? And then, you know, a bunch of people at the workplace get together and and go bring the person flowers in the hospital or something like that, you know? And then the two of you are kind of, now we have to ride together in the same car and then we have to team up and go use the company credit card to buy the flowers because the boss made us go and told us to get in the same car together. And you, you see what I'm saying, man? It could be a dramatic situation that brings the two of you together if somebody doesn't take action. What's the advice? What is the advice? So I'm not going to put it all on you, but I'm not going to let you completely off the hook. What sign was I saying that to earlier? Taurus? Similar to what I, I think it was Taurus. I don't remember. Similar to what I said earlier. I'm not going to put it all on you. I'm not going to say you have to do it all. But I'm also not going to say sit back on your ass and don't do nothing. You know, you feel this connection. It's driving you nuts. You're aware that this person has some kind of feelings for you. So let's start taking action in that direction. Let's start pushing the ball in that direction. Um, now let's say you have, let's say you have only, only after you actually have been putting forth all this work, energy, and effort, can you step back and say, all right, I've done everything. I've given this person my number. I've asked them if they want to go out to eat. Uh, you know, I sent them a friend request on Facebook. Uh, you know, I heart their little, little selfies and shit. Like they know I'm digging them. If you, if, if you don't know I'm digging you after all this, you a dumbass, <laughs> you know, only then can you back off, but we got to start taking some kind of actions and giving some kind of green light. I think for the overwhelming majority of you, you give this person the right green light. They're coming forward. They're coming forward and the empress, the empress in the upright It'll be long-term. I'm seeing a lot of signs got long-term commitment coming in in 24. And for those of you who have followed me for multiple years, tell the, tell the new faces in here. This channel is always growing. My channel has not stopped growing in six years. Okay, so there's always new faces showing up here. Tell them. It don't always come through like that, does it? Oh, no, it don't. Oh, no, it don't. I read it all. I read the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything in between. And one thing that has been coming through, it's been coming through since fucking late 2023, is that a lot of people have something long-term, their person coming in, in 2024. I've been seeing that coming through more than ever. More than ever. All right. Sagittarius. 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 Oh, yes, I do think you know this person with the Six of Cups. I think so. Yep. Oh, you and this person. Oh. I think you all have karma from a past life. And I think you know who this person is. 
I think so. They may not, for some of you, have the greatest reputation. Or you may kind of suspect that they're up to no good and they may be playing games. They're coming forward, though, kind of love bombing you. They're coming forward love bombing, probably because they may be fresh out of a relationship. They're coming forward real, real strong, though, real strong. But they're a shitty communicator, though. But what I'm not getting here is I'm not sure how you're reacting to this. It's not telling me whether or not you're jumping head first into this or if you're taking a step back and trying to like kind of analyze things. I'm not sure. I don't know. Some of you, some of you might have goals in mind. Some of you have some other things that you're working on and, and it may be at a time where you're trying to put dating aside and focus on something else. But it's not telling me exactly how you're reacting to this when they first come in. If I had to say, I would probably say that you're really wanting to focus on goals, man. Because I'm seeing Queen of Pentacles, Ten of Pentacles here. Focus on goals, finances, work. Some of you are starting a business. Some of you are taking on extra hours trying to save some money. So you're probably leaning more towards being a little bit unsure about this connection when they come in because it just they're giving they're giving off player vibes to you. Could be a Leo for some of you. Also have Cancer here. Let's look at the first three months of this connection. Will it turn into something successful? Or will it turn into something shitty? What's the first three months look like? Mm, seven of coins. Five of cups reversed. So I do think that you are going to acquiesce to this person's request. Um... But you're, I don't know, man. Something's weird. This isn't like you. This isn't like you at all. Like, if, if, if you're unsure about something, normally you'll just say no. If you are going to do something, you normally put the pedal to the metal and go 110%. So with this two of wands right here, I'm thinking that you're really trying to keep, with the three of pentacles, two of wands, you're really trying to keep your priorities in order. You want to balance all your priorities, work and finance, not make any stupid decisions, and manage this connection at the same time. And it's kind of weighing on you. It's weighing on you and turning into kind of a burden. And it's kind of getting in the way of the connection between the two of you. So communication is not all that great between the two of you. And tension is building. So... Kind of hard to say. I'm not really seeing a strong, heavy, intense connection in the beginning. Not strong, not heavy. Knight of Cups reverse now. Maybe this person totally switches up on you. After they see that you're not just going to let them run up in your life and just sweep you off your feet because you got more important priorities and shit to focus on. That might switch up on you. Let's get a couple of advice cards. What's a couple of advice cards for Sagittarius? Ooh, the star card. Knight of Wands reverse. Six of Cups reversed. Well, I tell you what. Mm, this is a tough one. Hmm. It depends on how you're feeling about this, honestly. Because there is no right answer, wrong answer here. Because I'm not getting bad vibes from this person. So if you're wondering about their intentions, I think this person is in love with you and they have good intentions. But at the end of the day, even if somebody has nothing but the best of intentions, if you're not feeling it, you're not feeling it. 
You know, and a lot of times what we'll do is we'll get stuck in a situation we don't want to be in and we're afraid to leave because it'll make us look like an asshole, right? Right? Like, I have no reason to leave. I'm just not feeling this connection. You treat me good. Everything is great. So then what some people do is they will resort to trying to invent a reason to leave. You know, they'll start trying to start a fight with the person so that they'll have an excuse to leave. They'll start trying to project something. And I'm not saying you're going to do that. I'm saying that you may get to a point where you feel kind of cornered because you're not really feeling it that much, but you don't feel like you have a legitimate enough reason to leave. Well, I got news for you. If you want to leave and you just really ain't feeling it like that, just leave. And again, that could create some karma between the two of you, because I think you have a contract here. It could create some karma. I think you all already have some karma, but it could create more. Hmm. What I would say, though, is that if you want to walk away from this, make sure you release it. Make sure you transcend and transmute the energy. Don't just walk away and run away from it and forget about it because that's going to put more karma on top of what the two of you already have, and you're going to end up back in the next lifetime trying it all over again. So that's very important that we work on releasing soul ties. And no, there's not just a special little candle you can burn that will release a soul tie. That is the, some of the most ignorant fucking shit that I hear in the spiritual community. When you're tied to somebody energetically, that happens on a quantum level. You don't say a little magical affirmation and burn a sage stick that undoes a quantum energetic soul tie. You have to use the power of your perception to undo that soul tie, okay? It requires conscious work and conscious effort. Fucking hey, speaking of sage, god damn, the energy in the studio is very thick. Now, that was heavy as fuck. That was heavy, boy, heavy. All right, Capricorn. Who's the next person coming in for Capricorn in 2024? Is it somebody you know or somebody you've never met before? Three of Swords reversed. Fool card reversed. No, I don't think it's somebody that you know. I don't think it is somebody that you currently know, but... I do think that when the two of you do connect, that they are fresh out of a relationship. And when I say fresh, I don't mean necessarily yesterday or last week. I mean, within the last couple of months, they came out of something long term. So it could end up turning into a trauma bond. Be careful with that. But I think... I think this is somebody that, uh, hang on. No, it's not somebody you know. No. No, it's not. But I'm also feeling a lot of insecurities and trust issues from this person, too. So some very strict boundaries may have to be drawn in the beginning. Because it looks to me like this person's out of a relationship. They're broken. They're hurt. And then... What happens when you jump into a relationship with that energy? Broken, you're hurt, you got trust issues. Then you start becoming real controlling, right? Real controlling and jealous. So you might end up having to draw some boundaries in the beginning with this person. Let's see how this plays out. Could be an Aries for some of you. I have two Aries cards here. How's this playing out for the first three months? 
How's it playing out for the first three months? A burden. Yeah. You're waiting for things to get better, but this is turning into a burden, not a blessing. What's the advice on this? What's the advice on this? Draw them boundaries, man. I'm telling you, before you make a solid decision as to whether or not you're going to be with this person, make sure them boundaries are drawn in the sand. You know? Um, basically, long story short, I know how to respect a relationship without being told. I am not going to be told what I can and can't do, where I can and can't go, who I can and can't talk to. I know who I shouldn't talk to. I know that. I don't need you to tell me that. I know when somebody's flirting with me and I know not to talk to them. Okay. I know not to talk to my ex. I know these things. I have common human decency and common sense. I don't need you to tell me where I can and can't go and what I can and can't do. And I'm not going to put up with that. The minute you start going through my phone and telling me where I can and can't go and who I can and can't talk to, as long as you know that you're really towing the line, okay, as long as you know that you're really respecting a relationship behind their back, okay, the minute that starts happening, I'm out the door. I'm out the door. I know how to respect a relationship. I know what I should and shouldn't do. I know when to draw the line, when to tell somebody to back off. I know what situation to not put myself in. I know where I shouldn't go. I don't need you up my ass all the time, and I'm not dealing with that. I will walk away from you. If you get crazy on me, I'll put out a restraining order on you. Just like you want to, I'm telling you, man, draw the fucking boundaries in the sand. You can trust me. And if you don't know that you can trust me, you're not the person for me. I'm not going to be dealing with somebody that, that, that is controlling and, and doesn't trust me. I'm not dealing with that. Not dealing with that. And you shouldn't have to. And that's for everybody out there. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your sign is. As long as you know that you can be trusted, you shouldn't have to deal with anybody that doesn't trust you. That's fucked up. Because that energy will destroy a connection. It will lead to the demise of a connection. Whether it's legitimate or not. For real. All right, Aquarius. Let's see what's coming in next for Aquarius for... 2024. Who's the next person coming in for Aquarius? Man, these new incense sticks burn up quick. Oh, I see a super chat up there. How do you say your name? I don't even know how to say that. Tatch Gray? I hope I said that right. If I butchered your name, I do apologize, but I appreciate that super chat. All right. Let's see what we got coming in for Aquarius. Who's the next person coming in? Is it somebody that you know or somebody you've never met before? Seven of Pentacles. Six of Wands reversed. Got the damn Six of Cups again. So I'm kind of thinking for some of you, it is somebody that you know. It is somebody that you know, but it's not somebody you know if you can trust. Like it could be somebody in the circle of friends that I don't know if they have a history of playing games or if they just have shady behavior that you've observed that, you know, but something has you kind of thinking, is this, uh, I don't know about this. I don't know about this. Some of you may suspect that there is a third party in there and 
for whatever reason. I just don't think you trust this person, but I think you know who they are. I do think you know who they are. Yeah, I'm going to have to, I haven't done, there's just way too much shady energy coming through here. I have, I know I haven't read any intentions this whole video, but with all this right here, we're going to have to see if, if you're right about that. Mm. Cause we got this lover's card here, man. This could turn into something fucking amazing. Let me just get like two or three cards to see. Is this really somebody Aquarius can't trust? Let's see. Hang on. Let's just get three cards for this person's intentions. I'm not going to pull a whole spread. Two of cups. Woo. Chariot. Well, they, I mean, they, if you know that they had like a bad past, you may be right about that. But I don't think they have bad intentions with you. Like if they did have a shady past, if they did have a bad reputation, I do think they are trying to work on cleaning that shit up. I think so. Could be a cancer for some of you. How's this playing out for the first three months? How's it playing out? Seven of Pentacles reversed, man. You're just, you don't like this person's behavior. They're too inconsistent and flaky with the Knight of Wands here. You feel like you're wasting your time, but you're not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere, but you're not pleased with something to do with this person's behavior. Maybe, see, here's the thing about the Knight of Wands, okay? The Knight of Wands isn't a bad person. He's just kind of a immature, flaky, and indecisive person. Like, for example, he could be going on this big tangent about how he wants to start this multi-million dollar business, right? And he means it at the time. But you see him a week later and it's like, yo, so what's up with that business you're starting? Oh, no, I changed my mind. It's like, you changed your mind. What are you talking about? Was you just bullshitting me? No, he wasn't bullshitting you in the moment. In the moment, he was serious. He's just not mature enough to follow through. You know? What's the advice for this situation? What is the advice for the situation? Ooh, okay. Well, we got to get this energy in check somehow. Because if you don't get this energy in check... Within the first three months, it could start turning toxic. Yeah, it'll start turning toxic. So whatever this is, let them know. You know, explain to them like a mature adult. Yo, I, I, I don't like that. How, you know, you're so flaky and inconsistent. And we were talking all day and then all of a sudden you went ghost on me. And then you pick up, you know, a day later, like nothing ever happened. I, I, I don't, I don't like that. I'm not going to keep dealing with that. Let them know. And then the next time they pull that, you know, whatever the, whatever the decision is, back off. Whatever it is that they do, like, like say they're in and out with communication and they just stop responding and don't respond for a whole day. You know, that's unacceptable. We're all fucking adults here. We're all adults. Okay. Well, the next time that happens and they go ghost, you go ghost. And then the next time they try to pick back up like nothing happened, don't respond to them. Don't respond to them. Match their energy back to them. There's a time and a place for matching energy. Time and a place. But they have to see, they have to understand that there are boundaries and I'm not going to let you cross. They have to see that. And you have to stand on those boundaries too. You can't just put a boundary there and then let them cross it, right? So if we can get this energy in check, you're all kind of at a crossroads here, okay? You're at a crossroads. If we get this energy in check, bam, beautiful, amazing. Could build something fucking perfect, right? If we don't get the energy in check, 
it'll turn very ugly. And I don't see it surviving 2024. All right, Pisces. Who's the next person coming in for Pisces? Is it somebody that you currently know or somebody you've never met before? Who's the next person coming in for Pisces? Man, I got that Empress though. Long-term stable commitment could be a Taurus for some of you. Hang on. It's not telling me if you know this person or not yet. Hold on. Okay, the Hermit. I don't think so. No, nope, I don't think this is somebody that you know. But I'm thinking it's also going to be a slow connection too. Because not only is it not somebody that you currently know, but when you first connect with them, you're not really going to be thinking of them that way. This is going to be a slow connection that kind of starts off probably with, with like, okay, let me give you an example. You ever go to like the same corner store, right? And then, and then, you know, you start becoming familiar with the cashier. And, you know, you're a regular in there. So, like, hey, what's up? How you doing? I don't know much. What's up? But it's, you know, so there's regular communication. We know each other, but we kind of keep each other at an arm's distance. And then that's as deep as it goes. It'll probably kind of start out like that. And then slowly but surely, slowly but surely, the two of you are coming together closer and closer and slower and slower. Next thing you know, this is something that you can't fucking walk away from if you tried. It's going to be one of them types of situations where you're not really going to be able to put a finger on exactly when it happened. So, you know, like the anniversary date is going to be the day that we met, right? So well, when's our anniversary? I don't even know. When, when did we become a couple? Like, I never made an offer. You never made an offer. We just kind of slowly came together and now we're inseparable, you know? Could be a Taurus for some of you. I also have Aries, Virgo, and Sagittarius. And no, you're not getting ghosted. I don't know who needed to hear that. I feel like there's some of you who may have been ghosted in the past and you have a fear of being ghosted. No, this person is not going to ghost you. How's the first three months looking? How's the first three months looking? Hermit again. Again, kind of slow. Kind of slow. The two of you are slowly opening up to each other. Very slowly. Very, very slowly. You may be a little bit afraid to open up to this person. But every time you open up to them, they open up a little bit to you. You know, and vice versa. So y'all are opening up to each other very slowly. This is a slow rolling situation. This isn't something that's going to swoop in, sweep you off your feet, and y'all are going to be married in six months at all. This is not going to be rolling like that at all. It's going to be very slow. What's the advice? Don't let it turn into a sex-based connection. I don't know who needed to hear that. Um, now, Whenever you connect with a new person, and I, this is for everybody, I don't care who you are. If you want somebody to open up and be genuine, upfront, and honest with you, you have a responsibility. Not only is it your responsibility to also be genuine, upfront, and honest, but... You have to make sure that you are providing an environment in which this person feels safe and comfortable opening up and being genuine, upfront, and honest with you. You got to make sure that when you're around me, you know that you ain't being judged for nothing. You can open up and express who you are. 
You can open up and express how you feel about things. You can express your opinion on things. And I ain't judging you. I ain't judging you. You know, because if I come across real judgy and, and I'm a loose cannon and I fly off the handle real quick, then if they put their guard up, that's my fault. So that's the only thing that I, that I would work on for the first three months here is making sure that this person knows they're safe to open up to you, right? Other than that, be patient. It's going to be a slow rolling uh, situation. It's not going to be an overnight thing. It's not at all. And there will probably be a few bumps in the road as far as communication goes and whatnot in the beginning. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with bumps in the road. I got news for y'all. A perfect relationship isn't a relationship that's happy-go-lucky, rainbows and unicorns all the time. A successful, healthy, long-term, divine partnership is a connection where we work through our struggles together. And what does that mean? How do you work on a relationship? I work on me and you work on you. The only thing you can do as one individual is make sure you're working on you. That's all you can do. All right, well, I feel like those were the messages all my signs of the Zodiac needed to hear for this video. So I'm gonna go ahead and end this reading here. Thank you all once again for tuning in and playing along. Don't forget to check down there in the description of this video if y'all would like to find out how to schedule a personal reading. And I'm going to get out of here now, y'all. Thanks again for tuning in. I will see you sometime between now and the rest of all eternity.